reading from Isaiah 42. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his law the lands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says. He created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives bread to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles to open my to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, this is my name. I will not give my glory to another, or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare, before they spring into being, I announce them to you. And from the book of Matthew, the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you this morning and we just ask your blessing upon us. Bless this teaching, Lord Jesus, that it might be honoring to you. Honor the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So the title of my sermon is simply this. I am the Lord. And I want to introduce to you royalty this morning. No, it's not the president. It's not the queen of England. But before I make the introduction, let me have his father roll out the red carpet. Again, from Isaiah 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations in faithfulness he will bring forth justice. And then with an emphasis, with the crescendo from Matthew 3, and a voice from heaven said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And then to this introduction by the Apostle Peter speaks so loudly from Matthew 16. And he says, Thou art the Christ the Son of the living God. With all reverence, I introduce to you he who needs no last name. His name is Jesus. Hear what Peter says of him in Acts 10. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and with power. Peter goes on to say about himself and the other disciples in verse 42, Jesus commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that He is the one whom God appointed. Jesus was appointed. Jesus was anointed by God Almighty, His Father in heaven. And in Acts 10, 44, we hear, 
While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. In the name of all that is holy, Jesus, may your Holy Spirit come upon us even now as a dove descending from heaven. For this I pray to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus who chose us before we chose you. And together, let us sing the words in this, of the song, Spirit Song. Oh, let the Son of God enfold you with His Spirit and His love. Let Him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Well, 
Why could Isaiah look upon the Lord and not Moses? Well, Moses was in the actual company of God Almighty himself. Isaiah, we are told, saw a vision. And Moses' first encounter at the burning bush in Exodus 3 with our holy God, he heard the Lord say, Do not come any closer. Take off your sandals for the place you stand is holy ground. And then we hear this. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And at this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Isaiah cried out, I am a man of unclean lips. He, he was a sinful man. God purified him and removed his sins so indeed Isaiah could in his vision look upon the Lord. In Isaiah 6 we read, Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And with it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin is atoned for. In Revelation 1, beginning in verse 12, we watch in awe as John the Revelator describes his encounter with Jesus. Get ready, people. Get ready to be amazed. I turned around to the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. His head and hair were white as wool, as white as snow. His eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing like a furnace. His voice like the sound of rushing waters. And in his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a two-edged sword. His face was shining like the sun in all of its brilliance. Here now, John's reaction to this glorious appearing of Jesus Christ, for which we now all await. We hear this from Revelation 1. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. And right about now, I'm kind of thinking that people who curse God, even with the casual remark that is all too common in our vocabulary today, and those people who don't know God, and they say that they're going to tell God a thing or two when they get to heaven. Those people who reject Him, all of them have no idea who God really is. Let me tell you about my God. Your God. He is the great I Am. On His robe, on His thigh, He has written the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He is the Ancient of Days, the King of the Jews. The government will be on His shoulders, and He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. On Him, the sun never sets. He is the light of the world. He is faithful and true. He is everywhere. He is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. And His name is higher than any other name. His name is none other than Jesus the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What we're doing right here is worshiping people. From Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, Almighty Ones. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to His name. Worship the Lord in splendor and in holiness. Reading that same myth, that same scripture from the message, which I don't quote too often, we hear the worship cheer. Bravo, God, bravo. God and all the angels shout, Encore. In all before the glory, in all before God's visible power, stand at attention. Dress your best to honor Him. 
Again, I say, hallelujah. I think too often we see our Jesus as a sugar daddy. I need this or I need that. Can't you please make this happen for me? And then in Matthew 21, Jesus teaches, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Now, there has to be a whole lot of understanding and faith in your hip pocket before you go asking Jesus for whatever it is that you need. First of all, your perceived need must match up with the Father's will. And just in case you don't know it, your will, your need, isn't always in perfect alignment with God's plan for your life. But the point is, it all begins with prayer. Prayer leads to worship, and soon you're more in tune with what God wants from you than what you want from God. And as we enter into worship, Psalm 100 gives us our cue. Shout for joy, the psalmist says. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. We are to worship our God with reckless abandon. Maybe even as David danced from Samuel of 2 Samuel 6, we read, David danced before the Lord with all of his might. Now in my heart, I have danced before the Lord with all of my might. And so we ask, what is true worship? It's not always all about the visible things about which I've spoken. Remove your sandals. Hide your face. Be slain in the spirit. Dance as David's dance. It's more about what goes on in your own heart. Do you grumble and complain about everything you do for the Lord? God doesn't honor that. You may have to answer this question in your complaining. Are you bringing those you love to Jesus or are you scattering them away? We need to lift up our spirit to the Lord and all we do for our lives should be all about worshiping Him. You know, we can know all this head knowledge about the Bible. We might be able to recite this doctrine or this command. We may even know the do's and don'ts of Christianity. But unless the word of the Lord pierces your heart, then we are as 1 Corinthians 13 says, I am only a resounding gong, gong or a clanging cymbal. If we know a lot of God's stuff and never share it, never use it in our everyday living, never use it in mission, oh, well, what's the point? James 2 asks this question. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no need, deeds? You know, you don't need just to be here to worship on Sundays. God wants us to praise Him and to worship Him each and every day of our life. Maybe Romans 12 defines for us what truly worshiping our Father in Heaven, the great I Am, is all about. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Go home today and read Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Read it and reread it. And then reread it again. For today and every day, Jesus reigns and He is the Lord. Amen and amen. Let us pray.
Lord, we come before you. We thank you for this time of worship that you give to us. This time that we can dance before you in our hearts and in our minds and in our soul. Lord, we just love you so. Be here among us as we worship, as we come before you. In the name of the Lord God's people said, Amen. Requirement is that you know Jesus as your Lord. And if you don't know him today when you walk through these doors, don't leave this place without confessing Jesus as your Lord. Because none of us know the time or the, the day or the time that we might die. We might die this afternoon and be standing before Jesus before the sun sets. And I don't know about you, but I want to hear him say to me, and I want him to hear him say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. 